Thanks to Thanks And good morning, everyone. Welcome to another Saturday edition, Gara's Guide to Fleet's Wake, year four this time. So we're going to be going over the most current event that just started uh, this past Wednesday. Uh, we do have a very punny code in chat for you today. Had to. Had to. I mean, come on. Come on. So... Uh, I feel like we've got a decent amount to go over today. We've got, uh, just, I think we're gonna, we're gonna do, like, a quick review of, for our new players, of just how, generally speaking, events work. Uh, there is a, a fuller deep dive video of that available in the CNE YouTubes, uh, Gower's Guide to Events. Um, but we'll do, like, a quick recap of that, and then we'll touch on, uh, the things specific to Fleet's Wake. Uh, and hopefully by the end, uh, you have a better idea of what to do uh, to get the most out of this event uh, and enjoy it. Uh, as as usual, uh, doing this with the wrong hand. I always bump my mic when I do it with that one. That tag on my shirt. All right. Um, as usual, uh, we do have uh, the CNE Games account in chat. That's Jay, everyone. Uh, Jay will be pulling your questions, so if you do have questions about the event, uh, you know, anything and everything related to the event, you can throw them in chat. Jay will pull them for me, and we will address those in the second half of the show. So, you know, first hour, 
all the talking, second hour, uh, you know, all the answering. That's usually how this works. Uh, all right. So let's begin. Uh, I'm just going to pull up some graphics here uh, because I'm just doing some stuff in the background. Uh, so Fleet's Wake. I feel like a Fleet's Wake. Uh, obviously, this year is, is again, Fleet's Wake year four. What does that mean? Uh, every uh, kind of, there are, there are, the game has only been out three and a half years. So how do we get to year four? Well, the, the first year the game was out, they considered that event year one, right? So right away, they called that one. We're now into event year four. You know, it seems a little odd to some people, but that's how it works. Um, we are in the eighth event of the year. So the, the event year starts with High Harvest Tide, which is usually September-ish. So we're now into, obviously, uh, right now, uh, February-ish. Uh, wrapping the end of February. Uh, this event specifically revolves around the sea. Imagine that. Uh, and that means Umberly. So we're chasing Umberly's favor. Uh, if you want more information on Umberly, they covered that on uh, Monday on Champions of Lore with uh, Trievor, uh, B. Dave Walters, and Aaron M. Evans. So you can hit that VOD up. Uh, that's also on the CNA YouTube's channel. Uh, they can do Umberly more justice than I can. So grab that lore about Fleet's Wake there. Uh, Fleet's Wake, because obviously we are dealing with the sea, we're talking uh, Fresh Fish is our event token. So that, now, for new players, uh, these are event tokens. That's the generic term. Uh, but in each event, they will change the name. So in this event, we get Fresh Fish. In the next event, it'll be something else. So just know that, you know, usually when we're talking about tokens, we're talking about Fresh Fish. I like to use the generic term because because there's 13 events, oh no, 17 events every year. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I don't, I don't like to memorize all of them. Uh, but we can have those conversations just by calling them tokens. Now there is obviously a generic how to play fact in the, in, in here and that has some questions for you. Uh, obviously we're going to be talking a bit, a bit more in depth. Um, each event, uh, touches on three champions and it's always the most recent three champions. Uh, so this is year four. That means there was a year one champion, uh, that year one champion, which will show up if you, we, if we come over here under achievements, um, and we look, oh, it was Zorbu, uh, everybody's favorite gnome DPS. Uh, he was year one. So that means he is no longer available in the event. Um, Instead, we get to the most recent three, so that's uh, Ariza as the newest champion, uh, Sasaspa, Sasaspia, excuse me, Sasparilla, no, uh, Sasaspia as the year three champion, uh, and the Black Viper uh, as the year two champion. So we're going to cover those three and uh, and their various eccentricities in this event. Uh, but starting in general, uh, so quick recap of event information, uh, event tokens. As we were talking about this this time around, it's fresh fish. Uh, how do you get those? A lot of people think you can go farm them, and it kind of sounds like that in some ways. Like, go farm fresh fish. doesn't work that way. Uh, one fresh fish, one event token will drop every 25 seconds, and that is uh, server time. So you can't manipulate that in the client. You can't use speed potions. You can't use anything else. It doesn't matter how many uh, parties you're running because multi-party mode allows you to run two. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's one every 25 seconds, and it's off something you kill. That's, that's kind of the big thing. If you're sitting there not killing a boss, like you're having a big boss fight, and it's not dying for a while, for a couple minutes, um, the game tries to hold, it keeps, it keeps counting and keeps ticking off and tries to hold those fish, those tokens, uh, for you. So when you finally kill it, or the next time, if you reset and you, the next time you kill something, it's going to start catching you up to what you missed. Um, so one every 25 seconds, that means that Given the 12 days of an event uh, that run, yes, 12 days, because um, it starts on a Wednesday at noon, it ends on a Monday at noon. Uh, so over the 12 days of an event, uh, you will earn roughly, I think the last time I did the math, 41,600 tokens, right? Uh, generally speaking, that's enough to get you through all of the all of the unlock adventures and all of the variants and have some left over to do some free plays. So how do you get the outrageous amounts some of us get, um, because I think I mentioned yesterday on Garver's Guide to Everything in Idle Champions uh, that I had burned, uh, like on the first couple days, over 80,000 event tokens, uh, bounty contracts. So 
uh, in the game, one of the nice things that you can loot uh, are bounty contracts. There's also a purple version. I, I've used all of mine up. Uh, tiny through large, um, and they give uh, different amounts uh, based on time. Like it says, you claim a bounty worth four hours of offline gold earn earnings. Also awards event tokens if an event is running. Well, what that means is you're getting four hours worth. Oh, no, we're starting already. That means you'll get four hours uh, of event token earnings. Um, so the calculation uh, is pretty straightforward. Uh, that means for a tiny, you're going to get 12. For a small, you're going to get 72. For a medium, you'll get 576. And for a large, you get 1,152. So if you want to like figure out exactly how much you're going to get when you're using each, there you go. Um, all this information is in, uh, I don't know, Gar Wars Guide to Event Planning. Uh, for year four, that's up on the subreddit. It's usually linked in my in my all my guide posts for the uh, events. Uh, which spoiler alert, I write a guides for events. It's actually the the first guides first guide I ever wrote for the community was a uh, was a guide to an event. Um, so I do those, um, and a lot of what we're talking about you can you can find in those guides. Um, so uh, if you want to get extra tokens. Uh, or you want to earn them faster, you know, you want to spend more tokens on things, uh, you do that by getting bounty contracts. Bounty contracts drop out of chests. Um, usually uh, Electrum or Gold uh, chests is where you're going to get those. Uh, also Supply chests, if you can scrounge some of those up somewhere. Um, those are going to drop uh, bounty contracts for you. Um, some people, there are a couple different ways people do this. Some people like to hoard their bounty contracts and only use them if they think, uh, oh my god, wow, this champion's amazing. I'm going to put all of them on this one champion. Um, others, uh, like myself, recommend just using them all every event uh, and getting an equal amount of, of gear for all of your champions uh, because you need them. You need those champions geared up, uh, you know, somewhat decently uh, for variants and such. Um, but, you know, do, it, do as you wish. Uh, just take that information and do what you want with it. Uh, like I said, three most recent champions come from each event, but Zorbu, uh, specifically any year one champion uh, that you see in an event going forward, is only going to be available from time gates going forward. Um, so if you're looking to, to hunt down Zorbu and add him to your formation, you need to do a time gate for him. Uh, each event starts kind of like a brand new campaign. Uh, that's the nice thing about events, and one of the things that I've loved about events since they started is that events are little mini microcosms of the game state itself. So you're doing the same thing you do when a new campaign comes along is, is what you do in an event. So events are teaching you kind of in these little short bursts um, how to be efficient at playing the game or attempting to teach you. Uh, whether you take that lesson or not is kind of up to you, right? Um so you start at zero favor, just like you would with any other campaign, and you work your way up. Um, events, however, make things, because they are limited in time to, to those 12 days, uh, they're not as hard as a regular campaign. Uh, things scale better, both the, the health of enemies um, and the gold that you earn. So you can run up your favor pretty quickly. Um, you tend to, when people show screenshots of like high watermarks, as I like to call them, which is the highest level they've ever gotten to, those tend to be in events. Um, especially when you're, when you're newer, um, because that, that's just the easiest place to push. Um, and you're also, you know, so far, every event has always had a, a 10, well, all the events, I shouldn't say so far, all the events, because they're all pretty much set in stone now, have a uh, 10 champion formations in them. Um, so, uh, the target you're looking for, um, like the minimum threshold, uh, to ride this ride that you're aiming for in terms of favor uh, I like to say is E10. E10 is a good target you should be shooting for. Um, as we did the math yesterday, that's 10 billion favor. I know it sounds like a lot, uh, but even brand new players can hit that mark um, with help from the community. And, that, and the community is here to help you, uh, both with the guides on the subreddit and people in the Discord helping you with formations and answering questions. Um, you can do it, uh, and we will support you to doing that. Um, but E10 is, is effectively... Uh, Sometimes it's a little lower, but E10 is, is where it's going to make all the variants show up as uh, either uh, or as easy green, right? Let me show you what that means. 
Let's hop out here. Fleet Spike, right here. This is where campaigns, these are where this is going to show up when you're doing an event. Like regular campaigns, uh, the event's always going to be at the bottom, right? Uh, so these variants, anything that's dropped down under this main thing is a variant. Um, we want to see when they start off, they're like, you know, deadly, right? Like a deep red. Uh, you don't want to do it with that. You want them to show as easy, right? And getting this difficulty easy green um, basically takes, like each one takes a different amount of favor, but this third one uh, is either going to be at like anywhere from E08 to E10, depending on the event. Some events, for whatever reason, make that difference. I don't know why. I think they should just be all like roughly the same. But anyway, aim for E10 and everything will show up green like it does here for me. This is when you then want to do the variants. I don't recommend doing variants before they show as green. Um, and to be clear, sometimes, sometimes uh, they'll still be difficult to do. Um, because this, this isn't a perfect calculation. They're not looking at all the power and all the different ways on your account. Uh, and telling you in a very smart manner that that you can do this. What they're doing is they're looking at the amount of favor you have. That's why I said get to E10. It's going to show as green. All they're looking at is favor. So it's, it's again, it's you must be this tall to ride this ride. Uh, whether you enjoy that ride, <laughs> if you're that tall or not, eh, it's a whole other story. Um so at least get it to green. That's going to give you your best shot in an event to complete it. The other thing you want to look at, and we're going to go over each of these as we talk about each of the champions, is the restrictions uh, down here in this box, this part of the box. They're going to add new kind of rules and restrictions to the variant that's going to make it more difficult than just the regular unlock adventure for uh, would be. Um, it's those, you have to you have to look at this being green, and then you have to look at what the restriction is and then make an informed decision about whether you think you can do this or not. Sometimes you're going to need more than E10 favor, maybe. Maybe. Sometimes you're going to need, you know, maybe E12, E15, uh, to really make it a cakewalk. Um, it's it's going to depend on the power you have in the rest of your account, right? Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Oh! Yeah, so don't do the variants uh, until they show these are green. Um, and specifically, oh, this is the main part. Uh, I mean, I, I like that as a general rule across all campaigns, but specifically in events, because in events, these tokens that you're earning, you're spending to access the the adventures and the variants in the free plays. So you because there's a limited amount of these, you don't want to waste them by attempting a variant uh, before you can easily complete it. Because otherwise you'll just have to bail on that variant. And you'll have wasted the fish. Um, and and you're just, that's it. It's not like you're going to earn more. Like you you have a fixed amount you're going to earn. And you, and you could get some from bounties, but you could have used that somewhere else, right? So be good to yourself and your token uh, numbers and make sure you're oh, clicking on the wrong things. Make sure you're uh, playing things efficiently. Um, I like to, in that vein, I like to, like, how do you get that favor? Uh, you don't want to get it from the variants themselves, obviously. You can't, if they're not green, you know, you're not going to be doing them, right? So when you first initially get those unlock adventures, those unlock adventures are pretty inexpensive. Uh, previous year, previous year champions, I believe they're like 25 tokens. Um, you want to do those unlock adventures and push as far as you can to your wall, uh, to try to earn favor. Uh, each of those, like you do those three first, if you're a new player, um, you know, you, which in whatever order you want, doesn't matter. Unlock those champions, just do those adventures, but push. So instead of just getting to 50 and it's saying, Hey, you completed and then bailing, uh, you want to continue, you want to push, uh, whether if you're brand new, you might only get to like 55, uh, but whatever, whatever you can push to in a normal run to get to your wall, do that, take that favor, do the next unlock adventure again. They're real inexpensive, um, and you'll get basically those are three free favor runs for you. Um, because after that, if if you do all three of those and they the variant still shows green, some of them might like the 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 first ones might at that point. But if the others don't, uh, then just hop into free plays. Find a free play that that works for you. And then what I mean by that, we're gonna we're gonna hop back out here real quick. Find one that works for you in terms of the formation uh, and jump in. So like. 
Uh, Black Vipers is the unfair sea. Uh, Black Vipers version of the unfair sea is this funky two, two tank, and then two in the next offset, and then this right. Like it's a real odd formation. Uh, maybe that's not the best for you in your situation. Um, Sasaspias looks a little better. These are all group more. Still two tanks. That's fine. Um, two tanks can actually help you quite a bit uh, if you're newer, because uh, it doesn't push all the enemies onto just one tank, which may not be super survivable yet. So this makes your tank line more survivable. Uh, and then keeping things grouped up makes it easier for uh, adjacency buffs, right? Uh, and then Arisha is similar, right? So I, I would say this is probably the easiest one, but you, you, all of the, all of these can be functional for for getting a decent amount of favor in. I would say Sasaspia is probably a bit easier. So you would you would jump into this, you would find one that's easy for you um, to push for favor in, and you would go get some favor until everything shows is green. And that may be what you do for the first, you know, four or five days, like through the first weekend of the event. That may be just how you attack the event, um, because that may be the best thing for you to do just to try to get that favor. Because uh, the variants, you know, as long as you're not running too many free plays, those variants will still be there for you to do. And you can always knock off the easy variants. Um, as they start showing green. Once you've done, uh, once you've gotten over E10 favor and you've you've done all the variants, so all nine of the variants, because you want to do th the three for each champions, because each of those variants is going to give you a guaranteed gold chest for that champion. Um, so that's you know a good shot at gear. Uh, once you've done that, uh, all the rest of those tokens you're accruing, uh, you then spend those not in the store. Don't do that. Don't go to the store and spend 10,000 of your tokens on an event chest. That's that. No, no. <laughs> Instead, you want to go do free plays. Pick, pick a free play for a champion that you want more gear for or spread them out. I like to alternate. Uh, when I run a new player account, I will alternate just down the line. I will do one for each and then one for each. And I just I try to get equal gear for all my champions. Uh, but you know, run through those free plays. You just got to get to 51, basically complete level 50, beat the boss. Um, when you do that, uh, and then complete the, the adventure, uh, it gives you a random chest, either silver or gold for the champion whose free play you did. Right. So, uh, there is a one in three chance it's going to end up gold, but the pity timer is at four, which means you're guaranteed to get a gold chest every four runs. Um, but that means 10,000 tokens because at the max amount of cost for an event for a free play, uh, it's going to be 2,500. So for those 10,000 tokens that instead of, this is why we say don't spend it in the store. For that same 10,000 tokens, you can do four free play runs. And that means you're going to get at least one gold and three silvers. Or if you're really lucky, you could get four golds, right? So do those free plays. Um, and if you want to farm favor past E10, absolutely do so. Uh, if, if you can do so easily, um, but that it shouldn't be your primary focus uh, early on. You should just get get those variants to show as green, do the variants, uh, and then decide: Do I want to try to push for more favor? Because those favor, those favor, uh, the favor you earn in an event, uh, you take it and you multiply it against the permanent campaign of your choice, and then whatever that total number becomes afterwards gets added to that campaign. So, so you have a million favor in uh, Sword Coast. You go and do the event. Uh, and you get to E15, like we use scientific notation in this house. That's press Y or go into the settings and do scientific notation. E15, uh, for each E01 amount of favor you earn in an event, that is a 10% bonus, 10% uh, multiplier to a main campaign. So E15 would mean 150%, uh, which means if we were starting out with a million, we multiply a million times 150%, that gives us 1.5 million, then we add that to the campaign, now we have 2.5 million. Right, so it's a great way to multiply and boost your favor in a primary campaign without actually going and, and running that campaign. Which, when you're when you're new, you're probably getting tons of favor in a campaign. But once you start getting where where some of us in game people are, like that's a big boost to your favor, and one of the bigger boosts is those multipliers from events. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, that's the general stuff. Let's dive into each of the specific champions. So as we said, uh, Ariza is is the newest addition to the lineup. Uh, she's an Asimar. Well, this doesn't take, tell me anything. Let's go to where she is in her lineup. Hey, I've got her in her pirate skin. Oh, here we go again. Uh, I've got her in her pirate skin. 
Because pirate, right? Uh, but here's the the original version. Uh, so she's an ASMR cleric bard. She's DPS support. That's a great combination uh, because that means even if she's not going to be your primary DPS in a group, uh, that means she has support abilities, which she can be very useful because as we were talking about yesterday, um, you know, you only really need one DPS in a formation, but you do need lots of support. So the more people you can unlock and, and bank up in your support roles, the better. Um, so she is kind of multi-purpose in that way. Um, she's brand new, so we don't have tons of information on her yet. We do know how she roughly works, right? Like she does, her base attack is scorching rays. Um, she starts out with like hitting three targets at once. Uh, as she levels up, she adds more additional targets. So she can hit up to six at base, and then she has a feat that adds another. So she can end up uh, at, at max level, she can end up attacking seven things at once, which is pretty fantastic if she's the, if you're using her as a primary DPS, but also works as a support, uh, against bosses like the Kraken. And you know what? While we're at it, let's get Kraken. <laughs> yeah, we're going there. Uh, it's, it's a punny day here. Uh, let's go hop into one of her variants. Uh, yesterday on stream, I did her uh, siren sound check. Um, so let's knock out one of these others. Um, so for each of Ariza's variants, you get like when you when it first starts, you're going to just do the unfair sea Ariza. This is just a generic, like I said, it's a generic regular adventure. There's no restrictions. Um, you just have to get past 50. But like I said, farm it if you can. Uh, and then you complete that, you get Ariza and you could start using Ariza. Um, but with the variants, each of them are going to have some restrictions. So, uh, Umberly's Abyssal Adventure. Abyssal crabs appear in each area. They do not drop gold, nor do they count towards quest progress. So what does this mean? This just means they're throwing more things at you, which means you kind of want to, uh, make sure you're using a DPS that has good wave clear. So single target DPS, not great for running this variant. Um, using someone that attacks multiple targets, like, mm, hey, Ariza, maybe, um, also, Ashara or Hitch, like any any of these uh, uh, multi-attackers, would work great to help clear this out. Uh, enemies deal 200% additional damage, so triple damage. Uh, that's not super bad because you only have to go to, to level 75. Uh, and then only champions with the support tag can be used. Now, this doesn't mean only support. They just have to have support showing somewhere in their tags. Um, and that's a big deal. So that means you're not even going to be able to use any primary DPS. So uh, Jarlaxle would be out. Uh, as a as a pure DPS, Delano would be out as a pure DPS. Jamila would be out as a pure DPS. Like in your starting champions, those kinds of champions wouldn't be available. So you would have to use uh, other people. Uh, and since you just got Ariza, who's a DPS support, that works real well. Um, so we're just gonna hop in, and we're gonna let. Oh, hey, I almost got everybody from my pre-fill formation. Um, let's throw Freely in, because Freely is currently, uh, guiding them through the unfair seas in Isle Champions Presents. All right, so I've got Ariza in here as my DPS, uh, in this formation, uh, and it's just going to push through and it's going to kill everything, and uh, I have more than enough favor, like I said, it showed as easy, so I'm not going to have any problems getting through all this. I shouldn't have any problems. So I will let that just do its thing in the background uh, while we talk about Ariza. Um, so Ariza, again, uh, good multi-attacker. Uh, her ultimate, uh, basically uh, her angel wings burst from her back. Um, and she releases a wave of divine energy that surges across the three, damaging all enemies. Uh, and that the wings trigger one of her abilities, which is called flaming wings. As long as she has unlocked it. Uh, so whenever she uses her ultimate... Uh, she gains 30 stacks on this ability, um, and stacks decrease by one per second. This basically, uh, increases the damage of her basic attacks. So the way to think about this is using her ultimate is something when she's your DPS, uh, that you want to kind of do on cooldown because that's basically ramping her up to max damage. Um, 
so the stacks will tick down over time, but they they will add more as you kill things. So as long as you can keep killing after you hit that ultimate button, she's going to stay at that max level. Um, pretty nice. Uh, normally we see these kind of ramping mechanics that require kills to maintain the damage. They don't have an instant ramp up button. Um, so giving her one of these really helps quite a bit. Uh, Michelle says Bardic Connection. Uh, she seeks out Vlanya if Vlanya is in the formation. Vlanya is another uh, event champion. Uh, but if you don't have her, like that would increase the damage of champions along the path between her and Vlanya. This is her support feature. Uh, but if Vlanya is not in the formation, uh, then she buffs adjacent champions uh, at a lower effectiveness rate. Uh, and then Diva Mode, whenever there's a boss monster on the screen, uh, her Flaming Wings and Bardic Connection abilities are increased. Right. So she is all about, no, no, I'm the most important thing in the room, uh, as she should be. She's a champion that gets two different specializations. So you can pick from one of two first, and then there's going to be another option later to pick, but another one of two, right? So the first two are Blazing Soul and Longburn. Blazing Soul just directly buffs Flaming Wings. Uh, and then Longburn makes your Flaming Wings start with more stacks. So depending on what kind of what you want to do there. Uh, you choose, I I kind of like Blazing Soul currently. Um, that's me. Uh, so the second specialization choice is between the Siren's Connection and a Fierce Connection. So uh, Siren's Connection is if you're using it, it's going to buff Bardic Connection. Um, so if you're using that uh, support ability between her and Vlanya or even just around her, uh, that's an option for uh, like a, a triple bump, a triple boost. Uh, Fierce Connection uh, arises damage increased by 100% for each other champion affected by Bardic Connection. So if you're really setting that up to uh, so that the paths like because you can have multiple paths as long as they're the same amount to get there. So if there's a lot of champions that are in these paths. Uh, and the number is hit a lot, you would go this one because it's going to give you kind of the biggest booth, boost. If you're using, this again, this is if you're using Vlanya. Um, and then uh, her enthralling performance buff now always applies to her uh, if Vlanya's does. So this is a, a neat interaction between two champions that we haven't seen before. Um, Vlanya's currently eh, like a mid-level support. It's not She's not someone that usually you run to, to put in your formations. Uh, so some people aren't super excited about this, but if you like... If you like this kind of mechanic uh, and you like seeing it, you can go out. If you have those champions, maybe it's going to work for you if you have good gear for them. Um, and Ariza always counts as adjacent to her for the purpose of, of uh, Vlanya's base uh, stacks. So this is a this is a deep fierce connection is a deep interaction with Vlanya, which makes sense because they're both part of uh, the signs of the realms. Um, let's look. Uh, items are generalized. Uh, so you get a, a straight self damage item. You get, uh, an all champs damage item, um, because she is a DPS support. You get one of each, uh, and then they go into three straight, uh, support items like supporting abilities. So each of her basic abilities, flaming wings, Bardic connection and, and diva mode all get an item to support them. That's kind of fantastic. That's, it's kind of the best way you could see a support champion. Uh, and then the other one reduces the, the cooldown on her ultimate attack, which again, is kind of perfect for her kit because you, that's the button you want to smash over and over and over again, right? Feats are looking at um, increased damage, like straight up increased damage as with all DPS uh, and then damage all champions as with all support champions. Um, and then they, again, they dive into uh, supporting and buffing each of those abilities. Uh, and then there is that one uh, feat on core performance that adds an additional base attack. Um, so depending on what you're doing, uh, if you if you're if you're doing things that if you're fighting against something like like the Kraken that needs lots of uh, lots of just one hit, hits for one damage to get through all those uh, chunks of health, uh, an additional base attack might come in handy. Uh, otherwise, eh, go for damage. Uh, her formation, as we see it here, oh, hey, we already beat it. Uh, as we see it here, is is kind of just two two, two by two by two all the way back through. Um, you don't get a ton of adjacencies, but it's okay. It's not horrible. Uh, I have, uh, like suggested starter formations in my guides. You can check out those. Um, those are just places for you to start from. Uh, and then you can swap in and around champions as you see fit. Uh, but it just gives new players, like brand new players, an idea of, Hey, this is how formations get, get designed and built. And you can go from there. Uh, like I said, we're doing Umberly's adventure right now. 
Uh, oh, it's going to be, what, 2,500 to start the next one, isn't it? I don't have that many fish. No! <laughs> but that's fine. So uh, the next one in the list is uh, Volo joins the formation. And what, the, what does this mean? This means basically they're putting an NPC somewhere, which is right here. Um, and that's just it. You're down, uh, you're down a champion in your formation. Uh, and this is a key spot because this is a five adjacency position. Um, so this is going to drop your power in your formation quite a bit as a newer player. Uh, so you need to keep that in mind. Uh, that means that, you know, even if this one shows is green, you might want to wait until Siren Soundcheck shows is green uh, because you're going to want more favor to power through this lack of a champion. One of the worst things they can do to you in this game at a variant is take away a champion slot um, because champions generate a lot of damage. Uh, so only champions adjacent to Volo deal damage. So that means you're only using one of these five positions uh, where you're, for your DPS. Generally, it's probably going to be up here, so that's not a big deal. Like for a new player, it's going to be right here. Uh, and only champ and champions not adjacent to Volo deal no damage, but their formation abilities are still active. So what that means, and this is where things get a little iffy, especially against the Kraken, is that only these five champions are going are are going to have base attacks that count against anything. Um, and since the Kraken, uh, we were, I was going to talk about the Kraken when we got there and we just cruised right by him. Uh, we cruised right by it and made a hundred too. Hold on. Hold on. Let's back up to the Kraken and we'll talk about the Kraken. The Kraken is a segmented health boss. So if we look over here, uh, you can tell by hovering over, I'm going to have to take a lot of things out of this. Hold on. <laughs> There we go. Uh, the Kraken starts at 50 HP. Uh, that is 5-0, uh, which means he has 50 segmented health chunks, which are each uh, valued at 1. That means any amount of damage you do to the Kraken is going to remove a, a tick of its health. Um, this makes the Kraken easier than some people might think. Uh, the challenging part of the Kraken is, as if you'll notice right there, he got some of his health back. So he spawns tentacles. Uh, there are different kinds of tentacles. This one that we see right now is a stunning tentacle. It says so uh, right here. Um, he also has vampiric tentacles. And those vampiric tentacles, when they attack, there's one right there, uh, will heal the Kraken. Uh, the Kraken, unlike most bosses, releases an endless wave of sea spawn uh, and abyssal creatures. Um, so despite the Kraken being in my opinion, one of the easiest bosses because it's a it's a segmented health boss to kill because all of your champions can hit it uh, and take away a chunk, as can your clicks. I can click on the Kraken, and if you watch back here, it's every six seconds it's going to take off. Clicks only count every six seconds against segmented health or armored. It's going to take off a chunk. You can click through it, right? Um, the challenge here is not the boss itself. The challenge here is this wave of enemies that keeps coming out. You need to be able to clear that wave and kill any vampiric tentacles so that the damage that you do to the Kraken sticks. This usually takes uh, AOE attacks. This is this is why wave clear is a big deal, like having Arise is good here because she's got lots of wave clear. Um, but more importantly, hitting Arise's ultimate ba -bam, clears everything on the screen and gives you an easy path for all of your champions to then only attack the Kraken. Uh, so that's what you want to kind of rely on, on the Kraken, uh, regardless of whose version of the Kraken you're doing. They're all the same. Uh, you want to try to AOE clear the, to hit one AOE ultimate to clear everything on the screen. And then uh, if you've got lots of other uh, multi-hit ultimates, like say Celeste, Celeste has a multi-hit ultimate. Uh, Jarlaxle has a multi-hit ultimate. Uh, anything like this, once the screen is empty, you can hit and and if you do it at the right time, the Kraken will be the only thing on the screen and they will all dump on the Kraken. This brings me to uh, kind of my favorite way to nuke the Kraken. I'm going to hop back a level. We're going to bring Crawl in. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, so newer champions may not have Crawl. Or newer players may not have Crawl. Uh, but if you do, like I said, if, if you don't have Crawl, uh, everything I just talked about, you like trying to do one that clears the whole screen and then 
lots of single target damage focus things on the Kraken. That's kind of that's that's kind of your general uh, modus operandi, right? Uh, however, if you have Crawl, you load him in, uh, you get ready to hit his ultimate. You need his ultimate on cooldown. Uh, as you transition into, and you can back up to set this up like I just did. As you transition, I'm going to click on uh, up here at the top right. I'm going to just click on the level. As I click on the level and I start to see the transition screen wiping, I'm going to start spamming. Uh, the hotkey for his ultimate. Uh, and what's going to happen, I'm going to explain this so that you can just watch it. What's going to happen is it will summon his ghouls. His ghouls are homing missiles. They will home in on the the first target that they see on the screen. And since the Kraken is a fixed position boss, uh, it, it is there when the screen loads in and it counts as the only enemy on the screen. And if you, so if you do this without speed potions, it has to be without speed potions because speed potions, they mess with the timing. Um, but you do this without speed potions, the Kraken will be the only thing that registers as a target on the screen and all of the radiant ghouls will home in on the Kraken. And it doesn't matter that C spawn come out or that tentacle spawn. They will literally dodge those things and go right towards the Kraken. So they will get Kraken, right? Here we go. I'm spamming, I'm spamming. Uh, there they go. They're going to take off. They go right past the ghouls. They hit the Kraken and they are a pool of dot damage. There are four pools of dot damage and they just chew right through the Kraken. It doesn't matter. We could have had the tentacles out. There could have been waves of enemies on the screen. Uh, this little goo of this little uh, pool of goo is just going to devour the Kraken on its own. Uh, and again, that works every time as long as you're uh, like as long as you can do that. If you're on a platform that doesn't allow you to spam that, it may be a little harder. Uh, you may have to clear that wave with a, a screen white ultimate first and have crawls follow up. It's the timing going to be a little trickier, but on PC where you can spam a hotkey, uh, this works fantastically. Um, all right. Um, in terms of Rise's achievements, uh, every champion gets uh, four achievements that are specific to them, and then one. They tag on one uh, achievement that's about reaching a certain level um, that isn't necessarily specific to them. It's it's named after them. So Arises is solo ready and you got to get to 175 in any, but it's in any unfair C free play. So that means you can do it for any champion. Um, so that's the one that isn't really uh, about Ariza per se. The others are Recruit Ariza, uh, Practice Makes Perfect, which is basically complete all three of the variants. Um, it's pronounced Ariza, which is get uh, a, a piece of gear in each of our equipment slots. And then the final act, and this is the one that uh, people, most people focus on, is uh, specifically about her and doing something with her. And that's have her kill 10 bosses while her wings are active, right? Um, so that one's pretty straightforward. Uh, not super challenging. Um, so let's go on to Sisaspia, uh, which I'm just going to go look at her stuff here on the campaign map. So the second champion, uh, if we come back, Ariza is their newest. Sasaspia. Uh, Sasaspia is a uh, Yuan T, so Snake Lady. We'll hop in and I'll show her off in a moment. Um, her variants, uh, so her, her formation again, uh, it's a nice 2-2-3-2-1. Two, 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 this is a nice layout, for especially for newer players. Um, it gives you good, good adjacencies uh, and double tanks. Uh, scattered shields. So this is her first one. Uh, her curse has broken all the shields and heavy armor, rending tanking champions useless. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, the shattered remnants have been stolen by some fiendish creatures and co-opted for their own nefarious use. Champions with a tanking role cannot be used. So in this variant, you don't even get a tank, which means you have to kill everything before it gets to your formation effectively. Um, good news is you also have a champion to start with called Calliope. Calliope shields champions when they start to take damage. This might be a time to make sure that Calliope is within two spaces of both of your tanks uh, or both of the people in your tank column, right? Because you can't use tanks uh, and put her in her College of Lore spec because that refreshes those shields faster. Um, random enemies spawn with five armored hit points. Armored hit points are the bad hit points. Those are the ones that require a minimum threshold of damage, not one like the Kraken. Um, so you take their, their total health pool and you divide it by the number of armored segments they have, in this case, five. Um, and you have to at least hit that, which means at some point it's only going to be the primary DPS 
killing things. So I do recommend uh, multi-attack champions. So Ashara, Hitch, uh, if you've already unlocked Ariza, that works. My voice. Um, so target that for scattered shields. Um, it is helpful to potentially, instead of doing this one the moment it shows green, wait until this second one shows green. That's going to give you more gold, and gold allows you to uh, overpower things like that. Uh, so the suspicious, suspicious shipment... Uh, strange shipment takes up a slot in the formation. This is the generic. You lose a champion again. These are not great. So again, you, you're probably going to wait until Seas of Sickness shows as easy uh, before doing this one. Um, it's so distracting that champions adjacent to the shipment deal no damage. So that's the problem. So any of these slots here, these five, you can't put your DPS there. Which as a new player using like Nyeli uh, and Tyrol as your first starter tanks. Uh, that means you're losing their buffs. They're still tanking, uh, but your DPS has to either go here or here, all the way in the back. Um, as odd as it may sound, and yes, I'm doing this on camera, this might be the time to break out Delana if you're new. Uh, Delana actually does more damage the further she is back in a formation. So, uh, yeah. Maybe try her out now. Uh, and she's got lots of AoE. So... Uh, but, you know, again, uh, whoever you're normally using could potentially work as well. Uh, just remember you're not getting as many uh, as many buffs from other people. So Seas of Sickness, the final Sysaspia one, she starts out in the formation. This is a thing that uh, they didn't always do, as you, as you, as we'll, uh, we'll see up here. Oh, Sirens. Oh, we didn't do the Siren sound check. Siren sound check. Sorry. A uh, collection of bars that were rejected the Sirens of Realms audition are back for revenge, which cracks me up. Each Area 3 bars appear, and each one has a different effect. Um, yeah, this is basically a only, you know, only one person's going to basically do damage. You, it's basically trying to get you to use Ariza, but it didn't put Ariza in the formation. If you'll note, we didn't have anyone that, that forced Ariza into the formation. But that's what Seas of Sickness does, and we usually see this quite a bit. Uh, where, where they're basically saying, you're going to have to use this champion in this uh, formation, or in this variant, because we say so. And what they're trying to do is teach you how to use that champion. Uh, so that's what they're doing here. They're starting around the formation, and she can't be moved, removed, or swapped. So they're putting her in a place, and you have to deal with it. Enemies move faster and deal more damage unless they're affected by her spores. So let's go talk about Sysaspia. Uh, oh, I'm going to have to pull her out of my other party. So give it a second. Uh, she functions off a spore system, which is like this, uh, she gets this swirl of spores around her because she's a, a druid, um, circle of the spores, if I remember correctly. Uh, her attack is blight, uh, attacks a random enemy. Uh, if it's a plant, it does 300% more damage. However, if it's an undead or construct, it deals no damage. That's flavor. It's fantastic flavor. But it's still flavor. Uh, Sysaspia gets some crazy uh, base attack scaling. Um, but her base attack speed is so slow. It's 7.8 seconds. It's so slow that you would never really use her uh, to do wave clear. Uh, and her ultimate is fungal infestation. We'll talk about that in a second. Oh, my voice is slowing me down. Um because it functions off her spores. So her main ability is Halo of Spores. She gets surrounded by all of these spores, um, and when enemies approach the formation, as long as she has a spore available, she shoots one out and attaches itself to an enemy. Uh, it checks every second for that. When enemies are damaged and they have a spore, uh, they take additional damage over five seconds. So it's like a dot based off uh, the damage that's done to them. Uh, regular enemies like trash mobs get one spore. Bosses can have up to four, so that's, you know, they can take more damage. Uh, and, since base, and at base, Sassaspia regenerates a spore every four seconds with a max of 20 circling her at a time. Uh, that damage does not affect Bud, so just just so everybody's clear. Did we get her? Did we get her? Yes, here we go. All right, there she is. Um, I'm going to put her back here. So see, she's got those spores spinning around her now. Oh, we didn't level up. Uh, oh, we did. A, yeah, she just had already chosen her specs. All right. Uh, so you watch and she'll get a spore and then sometimes one will fling out uh, if we don't kill things fast enough. Uh, otherwise, they're just going to maintain. Oh, those, those geese. Those geese. Uh, the geese that you're seeing on these levels uh, are courtesy. They shouldn't. 
They're showing up as beast. They should be uh, demonic geese and show up as fiends. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Um, that's courtesy of Idle Champions Presents. Yeah. So uh, she flings all these spores out. Um, she, and then she functions, everything about her kit functions off of those spores. So she gets a symbiotic infection, which causes, uh, uh, her companions around her to do more damage. Uh, any companions, uh, within two slots of herself, uh, it's 10% more damage per spore she has in reserve, um, base. And then healing, she has symbiotic healing. Uh, she heals ch damage champions within two slots of herself for one HP per second for each spore. That sounds real low, uh, but it goes up with items and and abilities and all that kind of stuff. So it gets somewhat decent uh, later on. It's not like the best thing in the world, but she's doing multiple things at once, which is nice. Uh, and her ultimate again will so will pop back there. So all the spores that affect her enemies uh, basically rip them apart from the inside, dealing massive damage. Um, and that's like it looks at all of the spores that are on the screen at once uh, and and does things based off that. Uh, so that one can get pretty wild. Now, her specializations, these had popped up, and now we can go talk about them. Uh, these affect how those spores function, right? So simple infection, uh, it just increases the effect of symbiotic infection by 100%. Eh. Uh, spreading spores tends to be the general usage one. Um, this now generates a new spore every three seconds instead of four, so you can generate them quicker. Uh, and it takes her max up to 30 um, and since a lot of things happen based off the total, like the max you have, um, that can be nice. So generally speaking, people tend to use this. Fungal body uh, just gives a straight buff to symbiotic infection and healing by 200% when her reserve is full. Um, this is general usage. This is niche usage. This is like what I do is I bring Sasaspia in for boss fights. Um, and, and so I'll pick fungal body. Because that means I'm tripling everything, which is way better than what I'm getting. Uh, this is just 10 more stacks. Uh, this is tripling everything. So this is like a 50% boost, and this is a you know 200% boost. Obviously, way better. But it only works when I have full spores, and you're only going to get full spores on a boss that doesn't spawn an endless wave of enemies. So it's a very niche use, but it's nice and powerful. I like, I like using this. But general usage, you just go for all the spores circling her body. Um, what else? What else? What else? So she is a, a support champion. So she just gets, she gets an all champs damage item. And then she gets three for each of her abilities. So Halo Spore, Symbiotic inf uh, Infection, and Symbiotic Healing in terms of gear. Uh, and then she gets the attack damage or the ultimate attack damage boost because her ultimate is actually, you know, decent, you know, not amazing, but decent. Uh, and then uh, ultimate cooldown. Uh, her feats kind of follow the same path. She gets all champs damage and then uh, healing spores and infection. That's where that's where she goes. Uh, as I said earlier, her formation is kind of the one that I like the most because it gives a lots of adjacencies. Um, but when it comes to her achievements, uh, her specific uh, one is supreme spores use Sasaspi's ultimate with forty or more spores affecting infecting her enemies. That's going to, the easiest way to do that is to do that generalized one I said, the middle spec, so that you're putting out as many as possible. And then you're just going to have to have, you can't do it on a boss level unless it's like the Kraken boss level. You've got to let lots of enemies build up. Um, so you're going to have, you're going to have to have 40 enemies on your tanks. This is better done on like a multi-tank formation where you can spread that damage out across multiple tanks if you're newers, but you've got to wait. You're going to have to just count. You're going to have to count, and you're going to have to do counting the hard way, which means, because you can't necessarily tell, but if a champion has a ramping buff, like for, for the number of things attacking it, um, I can't remember if he does it or not. No, yeah, not really. Does she? Well, if you have a champion with a ramping buff, you can count it there. Otherwise, you're just going to have to cross your fingers and kind of try to count along the way. Uh, usually pulling out your DPS helps because that means you're not going to kill anything. Um, and you're just going to get tons and tons of enemies uh, and then hit the ultimate. Javi has it with a certain imp. Thank you, Honky Donk Hero. Uh, yeah, so if, if you have those ramping buffs, you can check under the formation buffs to see what number they're on. 
And that's the South Spear, more or less. You can find more information uh, about all of these champions uh, on Reddit. I have guides for each of them. Uh, this year's event guide has all of the information for Ar Ariza. Actually, if we go over to that one. Uh, find it. There we go. Uh, so Garver's Guide to Fleet's Wake, Year 4. It's on the subreddit. It's not pinned at the moment, so you might have scrolled down a bit. Um, but the way I do it is uh, because there would be too much information to have all the champions information in one post. Uh, I put all of the information for the year two and the year three champions in their own posts. Then the links are there. You can click there to go to them um, and that will show their formations and everything. So this year four Fleet's Wake is going to focus on Ariza. Uh, it's going to have all of our information, uh, as you can see, uh, and our formations and uh, variant info. And I'll put tips. Usually I have to go update these because... I hadn't done them yet, so I've got to do, go do uh, tips for these uh, variants, uh, and then information on this, and then all the all the stuff. Right? You can find all that there for these and past champions, uh, and there's also a link in there to my guide to event planning, which will help you be efficient in your events. Efficient, fresh fish. Yeah, yeah. It works better with this event. I had to. Um, all right. So final uh, champion is uh, the one we heard the music for. If you showed up early, uh, we were playing uh, with the Black Viper. Wait, where is the Black Viper? Oh, here. Dang it! All right. We will have to leave. We will have to leave because she can't be used here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. But if we see, see, I got a gold uh, Ariza chest for doing that. Do your variants. All right, let's hop out over here. Add wizard, as always. Okay. I was going to say we're missing someone. Um, black Viper! Bring the Black Viper in. Let's move him on out of the way. Uh, I have her in her new pirate skin. Uh, but this is the original uh, no-skin version. We'll avoid that for now. There's also an Esvalet Black Viper. Uh, what the hell's an Esvalet Black Viper? Well, the Black Viper's actual identity is Lady Esvalet Rajnar. Uh, she is a noble of Waterdeep. Uh, but at night, she this is kind of like a Batman thing, right? Uh, except she steals... Batman and Robin Hood combination. Um... So yeah, so we have a, this is the regular version, this is the Esvalet, and then the Pirate Black Viper is, again, courtesy of uh, Adult Champions Presents, because she's one of the champions that is out uh, on the Unfair Seas right now. Uh, so she is just the Stabby Stab. She is just pure DPS. Um, and that's one of the reasons why people will be like, eh, focus on the other champions right now. Because, again, you tend to only need one good DPS in this game. Um because you only have one in your formation. So people tend to focus more on supports and tanks, uh, with supports being the number one thing they focus on. Um, and then if, if if someone's not the very best DPS, they tend to say they're garbage. But uh, Bla Black Viper is, I, I feel, firmly in kind of the middle group. Like there's the top tier, which is right now uh, Shar and Zorbu, and then, every, and then there's most of the people in the middle, and there's a couple at the bottom. Uh, so you can do content with the Black Viper, totally fine. Uh, I, Black Viper is my personal favorite champion in the game, uh, because I like the whole lore and I like the art. Uh, I don't like Viv Vivka's portrayal. I think we were talking about this yesterday. There's a, she just did a real good job, uh, on, uh, Dice Camera Action. She's doing a great job on Hydra Champions Presents. So let's quickly go through the Black Viper. Again, DPS, uh, on guard is her basic attack, which, uh, attacks a random enemy with her daggers. She does get more attacks as she levels. She becomes a multi-attacker as she levels up. Uh, her ultimate is a smokescreen. Uh, she throws that down. Um, all champions take 50% less damage for 20 seconds. And all of Black Viper's attacks are sneak attacks for the duration. Um, so that's a nice damage reduction and uh, damage bonus for her. Because sneak attack is one of her uh, abilities. Whenever she attacks an enemy for the first time, she deals uh, double damage. Um so during her ultimate, she's always dealing that, which is nice. Uh, Distracted Foes is another one of her abilities. Um, whenever another champion in the formation takes damage, she deals more damage on her next attack. And that stacks up to five times. Additively, not multiplicatively. Um, 
And then Or of Infamy, uh, she likes to be in parties with bards and rogues because she multiplies the effect of their formation abilities on herself. Um, so if you have a lot of support, uh, if, if, if you have good support in, from bards and rogues in your formation, Black Viper fits in. If you're not using those, then of course she's not going to do super great, right? And that's kind of why she's not in the meta right now is one of the reasons um, is because uh, a lot of the key meta champions, uh, like support champions, aren't bards or rogues. Uh, and then she has Jewel Thief, and this is the one everybody uh, kind of likes. She was the first champion to get a permanent uh, collection feature, basically. So whenever a boss is killed, there's a 25% chance the amount of gold is doubled and a red gem drops. Red gems are collected by the Black Viper and grant unique bonuses. Um, red gems collected on the current run grant the Black Viper plus 10% damage, and those stack multiplicatively. Uh, but again, they only, they only drop off bosses. So she's one of those champions that ramps up the further you're able to push, the the more of a bonus she's going to get. Um, so you have to use her from the beginning. You have to, to collect red gems. Uh, she also keeps a permanent count of her gems across all adventures, and those unlock threshold buffs. Um, and there's 10 total, and it goes up to like 6,500 gems. The first ones are things like uh, Aura of Infamy, also then buffs from Rangers and Warlocks. So that expands that Aura of Infamy. So now if you have those support uh, in your, in your meta that are Rangers and Warlocks that, that can work better. Um, it increases the max stacks of her distracted foes by five and increases the damage per stack, uh, by hundred percent. Uh, it increases the effect of her gear, uh, except her cooldown one. And then the rest are like double damages. This is kind of the target for where people would like to see her revamped a bit is changing some of those bonuses. Toragar, like the second one that came second champion that came out with stacks was Zorbu and man, Zorbu's Permanent stacking stuff is wild. Um, whereas Torgar came out with permanent stacks, but he did a combination of Zorbu and Black Viper, and his he's considered fairly balanced. Like, nobody's out rushing around saying he's OP. Um, so hopefully we'll see some modifications to Black Viper in that way in the future. Uh, sneak Attack uh, for specializations, she gets Assassinate and Collector. Collector increases the, the gem drop chance uh, to 33%. Uh, and the current run damage bonus is increased by 25%. This is the one that I kind of default to. Because, again, she's getting a lot out of gems. A, you're trying to collect a lot of gems to, for her permanent bonuses if you don't have it permanent yet. But but you want those gems just to give her more damage on the current run, right? Um, assassinate uh, Sneak Attack now also triggers against enemies that the Black Viper has already attacked once. Uh, and her base attack cooldown is lowered by half a, half a second after a Sneak Attack. That one's okay. That one's okay. But I feel like you can just rotate her ultimate and, and have sneak attack going off all the time. So I like to go collect her. Her gear is that of a, a primary DPS. So uh, two items that just do damage bonuses for her. Uh, and then she buffs her aura of infamy and her sneak attack. Um, did I note this wrong or did they add in? Huh. Increases the damage of all champions. That's effectively another damage bonus for her, but a lower one. This doesn't make any sense. That may need to be looked at. I thought I had a typo. No, I didn't. That's what you would put on a DPS support. I don't know why she has it. Uh, and then her final one is a, a ultimate, uh, reduces the cooldown on her ultimate attack. Her feats are just, again, she gets one that's to her and then two that are all champs damage. She gets a strength buff uh, and then another one for her. And then they just added, this is, this is why I bought this pack. Uh, they just added this Raid Planner, which increases her intelligence score by two. This qualifies her for Strahd, which, uh, A, you get to use her for the patron Strahd. Um, but B, Strahd's, one of Strahd's perks is a over 100% damage bonus uh, if you qualify for him. So this, uh, combined with this 60% one, make her, uh, you know, stabby stabby uh, a little better. Um, oh, they didn't do the whole assassinate thing. Here we go. Yep, yep, boom. Collector. This is the one I want. Collector. Give me all the gems. All of them. I want them all. Uh, her formation is a little odd. Uh, you know, I don't recommend, if you're going to try to do a deep push, I don't recommend using her formation for that. Um, but that's fine. Uh, and her uh, specific uh, achievement is to collect 300 red gems, which you're going to do anyway if you're trying to level her up. So... Yeah, there you go. Uh, that's basically the breakdown of the event. Like I said, you're gonna you're gonna do. 
the variants, you're going to try to get a handle on each of the champions. Um, again, I still, even though Black Viper isn't super high in the meta, I still think for a newer player, if you get decent gear on her, she's going to be great DPS, but her and Ariza are both DPS. Um, but Ariza is also a support, so technically you can have, you're getting two support and a DPS out of this adventure, and they, they might do real well for you. So don't be afraid to try them out, even if more veteran and experienced players are going, no, oh, they're not very good. They might be great for you. This game is very subjective based off the amount of gear you have and the champions you have available to you. So don't take blatant, blatant statements when you're new as as this is the very best thing. Um, there are always quali subjective qualifiers to these things. So go out and try them out. Um, this will continue. When is this event end? Uh, Monday the 8th. Monday, March 8th is when this will wrap up. So you will have this weekend to use like the Black Vipers being buffed this weekend. Um, go try her out. Uh, you have this weekend to use the Black Viper and to push and get, you know, specific buffs. Next weekend will also be a buff weekend. So I like to time my deep pushes for favor for the weekends when weekend buffs are going because why not get extra bonuses for trying to push super deep? And we're going to wrap it up there. I think that's... That's going to be all of our general guide. Um, yeah, I just got to finish off Ariza. And I'll be good. Yay! All right. Uh, we're going to be back. We're going to take a short break. Uh, and then we're going to come back and I'm going to answer all the questions. Uh, Jay has pulled them all. I see like about 30 of them so far. So add more questions if you want. Um, and we'll be back momentarily. I'm going to play uh, the Vipers Fangs. From Bardic Inspiration. So this is, uh, if you haven't seen Bardic Inspiration, uh, it's a show with Jason Charles Miller and uh, Dylan where they start with like a champion or a prominent figure in the Forgotten Realms. And then over two hours, we write a song for them. And when I say we, I mean we. Like everyone in the chat helps and contributes to lyrics uh, and ideas for lyrics and the theme. Like what type of musical style is it going to be? Um, which I think the most famous, uh, flip on the head is we came in one day to do a Tiamat, uh, and someone in my chat had said, are they going to do a Taylor Swift theme today? And so I mentioned that in chat when the theme started and yes, now we have a Taylor, uh, a song for Tiamat called you could be my dragon queen that is sung from the perspective of Taylor Swift, uh, pledging her adoration for Tiamat, which is just absolutely fantastic. So tune in on Tuesdays for Bardic Inspiration. Uh, and this is the kind of song you're going to hear. Uh, I'll be right back. Bad 
Thanks All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's get back to this. Uh, what do I want? I want? I'm just gonna go with this one. Hold on, I'm leveling things up because I see questions. And we're gonna go find out. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna start with the questions. Uh, I'm gonna go through and try to pick out the ones that are pertinent to this event first. Um, but let me, let me remove bunches of votes. How many bunches of votes? Hey, a Modron core is out of power. I've been waiting to see this. I'm so glad this happened on stream. Look how cool that graphic is. A little sleepy Modron, and it's like drooling. That's so cool. Uh, this means uh, I have not clicked on my Modron. Uh, it will not automate anymore. I have to go in here uh, and click on the view core. I just have to look at it. Give it some attention. Uh, and now it, it will be full of energy again. Yay. Okay. Uh, so what I wanted to do here... Uh, the, one of the first questions was, uh, for Ryza's achievement, does she need to do the killing blow to a boss? I mean, I would, I would assume so. But, that's the wrong button, Garwar. Um, I would assume so, but I haven't done this yet, right? So, what is it? Uh, have Arisha's, Arisha kill bosses while flaming wings. Yeah, Ariza. Yeah, so she would have to do the, the... The killing blow. So I haven't. Come on. Get that cue. I mean, I would assume she's got to do the, the killing blows. I guess I have done a few of these. But I mean, it does say kill 10 bosses. So have her do it. So yeah, I'm going to say yes. Uh, can you. Still, this is semi-related to Fleet's Wake. Can you still somehow get all Zorby's achievements? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so those champions that are from prior events, um, you can still get all of their achievements because, uh, like I said, one, the level-based one, can be done in any champion's free play of the Unfair Seas or whatever the main adventure is for an event. Um the unlock them, obviously, you can unlock them in many ways. The main one is from a time gate, but also just buying them in the store for cash can is a way to unlock them. Sometimes getting a code for them, like Spurt this week. Everybody got to unlock Spurt if you didn't have him uh, from the code uh, that was uh, put up on Critical Role. Uh, you can find it in the Discord if, if you didn't get it. Um, those are all ways you can unlock it unless you can get the unlock one. Uh, you can gear them up in all manner of ways, including now Electrum Chests, which give gears for any champion that you've unlocked. So that achievement can be gotten straight anywhere at any time. Uh, you can do the, uh, the champion specific achievement anywhere. Like I'm doing Arises right now in the Mad Wizard. I'm not in an event, so you can do that there. Um, so that, that leaves the, the last one is then variants. Well, variants are usually only available in an event, except they updated time gates during year three, knowing year four was coming, um, so that each time gate has two gen general adventures 
and one variant and the variant uh, changes. So the first time you do a time gate uh, and you have, so you have, you won't have done any of the three variants. Uh, it will give you one of those three at random. The next time you do the time gate, I gotta make sure I do this right. <laughs> uh, the next time you do the time gate, uh, it will give you one of those two variants that you haven't done. And the next time you do the time gate, uh, it will give you, it will guarantee you will get the last variant that you haven't done. And then after that, it's just going to give you randomly one of the three. So that is how you get all of the, uh, achievements still for, uh, you know, for champions, uh, that aren't current year. Uh, Norton FB, hi, I'm new to the game. How much favor in the event do you need to get a hundred percent increase in the main favors? E10. E10 is a, a, cause it's, it's 10% for each EO one. So E10 and that's 10 billion favor, uh, which is doable. Uh, praise or I'm getting into mid game content. Hey, there it is I'm getting into mid name content and hesitant to pour resources like contracts into a I don't have Vlanya and do have some of the upcoming event champions who need gearing up. Is this proper resource manager? If I don't rely on any of the fleet's wake champions. So in general, in general, I like to keep my champions geared up uh, somewhat equally. Um, we're doing this. You know what? I want to put... You know, we're just going to bring the three stars of our show up on stage. Um, I like to keep uh, my everything kind of roughly equal. Um, so if we look at... What's going on? Here we go. Uh, if you use a tiny blacksmith, any kind of blacksmith contract, um, it will it will take you to this screen, which shows all of your gear and item levels. Uh, I use blacksmithing contracts, and I try to dole them out equally amongst, starting with the lowest uh, average item level champion. I use average item levels because that's kind of the best number to go with. Uh, you will see some are outrageous, right? Like Bruno or any of the core champions are going to be outrageous because every time you open a silver or gold chest, they're they're going to get duplicate gear. This is why we say don't use blacksmithing contracts on core evergreen champions. They're going to go up just fine on their own. Uh, blacksmithing contracts should be used on on uh, event and time gate champions. Um, so my current floor is ninety, as you'll see if we go down through here. Any champion that has all is full epic will have at least ninety. Um, Champions that I don't have full epic on yet, like uh, Lucius and Human, are still lower because I wait until I get full epic before I start putting blacksmithing contracts in, onto them. Because I know these item levels are still going to go up while I'm hunting for those uh, for those epics, and I don't want to like over level someone that I might not necessarily use all the time. Um, and then Ariza, I've only gotten up to full blue so far, right? <laughs> Item level eight, right? So getting full epic for her, I'm going to get lots of duplicates when I open my golds, which we'll be doing next Friday. Uh, and we'll see what we end up with. Um, so I recommend holding. If you're newer, I mean, you're starting to get into the mid game content. Um, it's going to get harder blues, like at least getting to blue, um, and having, you know, a smattering of purples is solid power curve for uh for your champions if you can get if you can get at least into blues because you can get power from your favor and your blessings right favor feeds into blessings uh but then you get power from perks from uh your patrons and you can get power from your modron core leveling it up and putting pipe multipliers in uh, like there are other ways to get to start getting power and to be working uh on your goals to that so I don't know that you need to dump lots of contracts into into champions early on if your gear is, you know, not full epic. I mean, you should be hunting down that gear. You can in in certain scenarios if you know that you're using uh, certain champions all the time. If you want to go ahead and bump them up, sure, give them some, but just don't go all in on any one champion because if you go all in on one and then they rebalance that champion you're gonna feel real bad real bad um and it, and just mathematically speaking it's better to put items like blacksmithing and item levels onto 
multiple champions you're using to formation so that those numbers multiply off each other and make bigger numbers instead of just multiplying off of one big number. Um, just because of the way that the diminishing returns works for item levels. There are a couple exceptions. Uh, if you have an outrageous number of blacksmithing contracts to drop on, say, uh, Briv or Human, and now to a certain degree still Milf uh, or Sentry, um, those are all speed champions who scale uh, to varying degrees with item levels on their speed items. Um, that can all be nice. Um, but generally, if you're trying to actually push, if you're trying to you know demit, distribute item levels to push and to get more power, that's not necessarily where you're going to put them. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would say hold. I, I don't know that you need to, with new champions, dump item levels into them right away. It's more about trying to get good items for them than anything else. Uh, Griggle, I'm at 1e9 favor right now and all variants are green. Yeah, nice. Shall I continue to farm more favor to hit e10? Uh, if, if everything shows is green, you can start rolling through the variants. I think, I, again, take a look at the restrictions and see, you know, see how well you think you're going to do. Um, and one thing you can do is you can look at, you can look at the restrictions and you can go into a free play for that champion um, and just use the restricted champions in the way that they're trying to say. Like if, if you're missing, like if there's a, a stat based thing or something um, and you can you can test it on a free play and then just switch to a pushing thing and get some more favor. But I think if you've got E9 and it, they're all showing as green, I mean, you've got a good chance. You can definitely do the first two. It's just those third ones that are going to be the little more challenging and just take a look at it and see. Um, I think if you're already at E9 in the event, though, you can probably easily do some more free plays and get higher than that. So, you know, I think you're going to want to go higher. So you might as well try to go a little higher right now. Uh, Tinelia, I'm looking for a speed champion. Who is the fastest? Yeah, it doesn't... I mean, there are answers to that, but... If you're just if you're just picking something up and using them out of the box without lots of gear and item levels, uh, then what you want is Deacon or Shandy. Um, I I think Shandy of the two I would rate a little higher because she speeds the game up like a speed potion does. Um, but Deacon is cheaper uh, and easier to get into your party because he's a slot one champion. Whereas Deacon's, uh, Shandy's up here in slot six. Um, but neither of those need items or item levels to do their thing. It's just built into their kit. Um, but then you've got like Human, who just came out recently. Uh, he's, uh, he can help quite a bit. Um, and he scales off item levels. Uh, Briv is probably, uh, the one that, you know, he just flat out skips levels, but he is Briv and Human and Melf are black holes for item levels. You can just keep pumping item levels into them, into the thousands of item levels uh, and their abilities keep doing more stuff and making you faster. Um, but you have to have all of those item levels to even get there. So there's that's either a, a, a significant uh, cash investment in buying a champion and tons of chests for them, uh, and dumping all your blacksmithing contracts for them, or it's just time, right? So if you just want speed right out of the box, Deacon and Shandy. Um, if, if you're lo looking long-term effectiveness, then, uh, Briv, Human, Melf, uh, Sentry is solid, but needs item investment, but hers caps at a certain point. Uh, that's nice. Havilar's is an occasional thing with, against fiends. Man. I don't know. There's some reviews out there. You can check them out. Uh, Darius Major, how are these colors of variants scaled? I had a green one, which I couldn't finish immediately, but I read one, which I didn't want to run with. Again, it's not about the color. The color is that you just need to be this tall to ride this ride. Could people shorter than that tall ride the ride and enjoy it? Sure, but there might be a safety issue, right? Like that's <laughs> that's that's why they make that limit. Uh Again, it's not, it's just looking at your favor. It's just measuring your favor. It's not measuring anything else about the power in your account. If you have a very strong account, uh, you can overcome the favor disadvantage. Uh, but new players, probably not going to have that super strong account. 
uh, should follow the guideline of waiting for it to show green. Uh, again, you have to use your uh, your knowledge of the game and how things work to read the restrictions on the variant and determine uh, if it is easy or not for you at your current point. Uh, Sharkfighter9000, anyone know offhand how many champions in the game now? Ooh. Uh, hold on. We can do this just right here. I can math on stream. 6, 12, 18... That's 25, 31, 36, 43, 50, 56, uh, 63, 70, 76, 76 champions. If I screw that up, uh, blame me doing it while on stream. Uh, Cobra King, one of this week's challenges is spend 5k fish on chess. Don't event chess, only sell for 10k. Yes. This is, uh, this is one of those times I'm just going to blame CNE for doing, uh, this is just, this is their fault. This is their fault. It's right down here. So this is the idle champions presents the unfair seas. One of the challenges this week is spend 5,000 fresh fish. Originally it said adventures and I understood what it meant when it said that, even though well, we'll talk about this. Now they changed it to chess, thinking that would clarify it. No, that doesn't clarify it either. Uh, specifically, what this challenge wants is for you to do Arise's third variant, Siren Soundcheck. That variant costs 5,000 fresh fish to start. That's it. That's what they want you to do. They should have just said that. They should have just said, do... Arises Siren Soundcheck variant. Instead, they said other stuff that didn't matter. Um, yeah, because nothing else. I don't know if I don't know if buying a a chest from the shop actually triggers this. It might. It shouldn't. That's horrible. Don't do that. Again, we talked about that earlier. Don't don't buy those. The only reason those chests exist is if it is the month. If it's Monday the eighth. Uh, you have over 10,000 tokens, but you do not have enough time to run four free plays to burn those tokens off. Then you go buy a 10,000 chest, like a 10,000 token chest, uh, to spend your tokens because those tokens are going to disappear. Um, you're not going to be able to run those variants. So you may as well get something for it. That's the only reason that chest exists in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, they, they just worded this wrong and that's totally their fault. And even when they fixed it, uh, they didn't fix it. Uh, question, Traker95, Walnut, best take in this year's formation, agree or disagree? Mm -hmm. No. I'm not even sure where, why that, you know, yeah. I mean, it's, again, what, it, maybe the best tank you have available? I don't know, I don't know. I don't know the context. In general, no. Uh, call me Pask. How do I start the event? Can't open the first location. Uh, if you're super brand new, this is all I can assume. If you're super brand new and you're up here doing a brief tour of the realms and a brief escort, if you haven't done these yet, you're not going to be able to do the event. You have to get out of the tutorial. This is the tutorial. You have to get out of the tutorial to open up the sword coast and it will take you here with the cursed farmer. Once you can see the cursed farmer, Fleet's Wake will pop up, you will come over here, and then you can start doing adventures. Uh, if you're out of the tutorial and you can't access the event, restart. First thing you do is restart your client or whatever, or your app or whatever you're playing the game on, and try again. If it still doesn't work, submit a ticket. Uh, doorbell streams for a new player or mid game player without many event champions, which champions do you recommend focus on gearing this event? All of all three of them. Again, that's always going to be my recommendation is to gear all three of your event champions equally, because the whole point of this game is to collect as many different, uh, put as many different tools in your toolbox as possible to, to play the formation strategy management game, right? So every champion is a different tool that functions a slightly different way. Um, and can have a slightly, you know, have a niche that they're really good in. So 
you know, keeping them all roughly equal uh, will let you complete as many potential things as possible. Uh, and over time, as, as you know more about the game and, and you can, you'll be able to make your own decisions about which ones you think are, are the best. Um, but I will always recommend if you don't know how to do that yet, just gear them all as equally as possible. Like basically spend your tokens as equally among them as possible. Uh, what's longest Arise of Vlanya connection without Arise of being in the front line? Ooh, I don't know. Because there's so many, there, there is every single event champion and time gate champion has their own formation layout. So like, as, as we looked and we saw each, each of, uh, each of these champions in this has, let me close these again. Each one has a different layout. That's true for every single, uh, champion they've added through an event. Right. And then you add, so there's 76, is that what we just said? 76 formation layouts just from the champions. And then one for each of the main campaigns. Um, I don't know them all by heart. I don't, I don't know. Someone can go figure that out, but it would be very specific to, to that one champions thing. Um, yeah. Uh, would you say rises numbers could compete with other high power supports? I don't know. I don't have full gear on her yet. Um, and I don't, I'm not the person who sits down and crunches all the numbers to see where they fall in the spreadsheet, right? Uh, Ridge does a spreadsheet, uh, Silesa, they usually have some kind of review up at some point. Um, I don't know when they do them, just whenever they have their time available now. Um, so if you're super mathy and want to get super mathy, go check out Ridge, Ridge's spreadsheet, see if it's added, um, see where the numbers fall. I don't always look at it that way. I want to find usefulness in scenarios. Um, and I also, and I don't necessarily think you have to have always the very, very best champions in to complete things. So, uh, how good is the rise of DPS if you don't have Vlanya? I mean, probably roughly the same. I feel like Vlanya triggers, uh, the, her support feature more than her DPS feature. Uh, so she's going to be fine. So standalone as a, as a DPS, uh, invigorating rain, uh, without speed potions, where is my extra speed coming from? Oh, the speed champions, right? I, I know we were kind of talking about who those were. Um, but speed champions have a, this, there's a group of speed champions. We're going to do, hold on. Did we decide on this? Let me, let me double check before I say this. And then I get smacked by Dylan. Do, 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 do. Yes. We are going to have a Gar Wars Guide to Speed Champions in the near future, a couple weeks from now, uh, where I will talk about uh, Speed Champions specifically uh, and what, what is a Speed Champion. But Speed Champions are basically champions that have an ability effect that uh, makes you progress faster through levels that is not just damage or having multiple attacks. Right, it's about getting more credit or reducing the number of things required or skipping a level entirely. Like there's a variety of things. Um, that's where that's where the speed usually comes from. In Volo's guide, would that be a good one to use with a rise of Vlanya connection? One on each side of Volo. Mm, I don't know that that's necessarily how that connection works. They want you to have champions between them, and it's usually buffing. I feel like that's the support one, and you put your primary DPS between Arise and Blanya. To a certain extent. Again, Arise is new. Still getting the hang of everything with her. Um, so, you know, we'll see. Strategies evolve. They don't always happen uh, right away. To what extent would rear attacking champions like Jarlaxle be effective against the Kraken? It's okay. It's just that, like, Jarlaxle uh, only gets one stabby. If he doesn't kill something... Uh, he doesn't get all of his bonus attacks, right? Like, he will continue attacking as long as he kills something. So he won't kill the Kraken, which means you're only doing one chunk every time he attacks. Uh, and because of those vampiric tentacles, it doesn't do a whole lot. Uh, Black Vipers also, um, so I'm mistaken, is a rear stabby. Oh, no, it's random enemy. Okay. So, yeah, that wouldn't necessarily hit. So rear stabby is like a... Uh, Charlaxle and Caddy Bree, they both attack the furthest enemy. Again, because they're not attacking often and they're only hitting once, not really the greatest. You want that wave clear and you want multi-attack stuff. Like, And by multi-attack, I mean people who actually have multiple attacks, whether they kill something or not. Like Arise is doing multiple attacks, Black Viper will do multiple attacks. Uh, 
Ashara does multiple attacks. Hitch does multiple attacks. When Briv skips ahead, does he skip boss levels? Yes. Gem farming, I'm not sure if he jumps them. I need to go back for the gem. Uh, it's supposed to collect the gems. Anything that drops out of a bag, like the gems, uh, are supposed to be collected when Briv jumps a level. I've heard there may be some issues with that right now, but I, I don't know the status on that. But that's always, the, the, that's they made sure that worked that way originally, specifically because of that. How do you do the Arise of 10 kills? Does it have to be consecutive? It doesn't have to be consecutive. I'd done a couple on a previous one, and then I finished them off consecutively here. Uh, again, I just, I took everybody out. I think everybody just watched. I took everybody out. I just put Arise in, and then I killed. A, I sat on a boss level and killed the boss 10 times. It's not very difficult. Now that there are more than three yearly champions, will they rotate the old two each year? No. Will we see Zorbu again? No. It's always the three most recent. So it's always whatever. So in year eight, I, I'm just example. In year eight, you will have the year eight champion, the year seven champion, and the year six champion. The other five years will be time gate champions. You will only get them out of time gates. Uh, Skater guy, is there a best adventure to do red farm, gem farm for black viper? No. No. I mean, you could say Mad Wizard because Mad Wizard is seen as the fastest progression in the game. Because it's basically you just have to kill, you have to kill a boss, as many bosses as possible, as quickly as possible to get to, to 300, right? But look, just don't worry about doing those things immediately. If you just go use the champions, this is what all their, most of those uh, achievements are, are basically... Just go use the champions and you'll get it just by using them. There are some that you have to use them in specific ways, but collecting red gems is not one of them. Uh, Podius Mori, do you reset at 50 during event farming uh, after you've done all the variants or do you push for favor? Uh, well, I, I push for favor initially to get enough to do everything, which on this account is like one run. Um, but on, on like my other accounts, I try to get it up to everything showing is green. And then I do the variants and then I make a decision. Do I want more favor? Like, do I think I can easily get more favor? In which case I'll go easily get more favor, but I do it on the weekends. Uh, in, but if it's not the weekend, then I'm just burning tokens going to 51. Seems like the convert bonus gravitates towards 100%. Oh, no, 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 no. It's for every E01, you get 10%. So if you're E10, it's 100%. I am E32 right now. That's 320%. It's a straight, there's no diminishing returns. It's a straight, uh, straight math. So I will get into the 40s. I will do another probably two deep pushes because of just the way it works getting into the 40s. Um, so I'll do at least two more deep pushes. And I will end up with a 400%, 400 and something percent uh, multiplier when I come out of this adventure or event. Uh, does Xander's lucky shot, who? Or Human's teamwork, <laughs> Zang abilities affect the fresh fish drop rate. Uh, so I don't even care who, the, who you're talking about here with champions. Nothing affects the fresh fish drop rate. Nothing. Nothing. It is one every 25 seconds server side calculation period. Uh, the only way to get extra fish is to open bounty contracts. Sorry, the Iron Fox, just Xander. Oh, come on. Uh, are there any negatives to starting a um, Masema? Are there any negatives to starting a manual time gate during an event? After you've completed, see, there's a qualifier here. After you've completed the quest variants and are just farming tokens for free play. Well, no, at that point, obviously, you answer your own question. If you're already done doing everything in the event, which when you get to a certain amount of power, you can do within the first day, um, do whatever you want. Like at that point, you're done. You can go do whatever you want. What's the best DPS? Uh, GDRR1. The correct answer to that question is whichever works best with your current group and in the formation, your formation layout you're in currently. Um, however, if you're trying to get uh, meta about it, which is probably where you're going. Uh, Ashara and Zorbu are currently in a fight for best DPS. Uh, Zorbu, 
Ashara needs uh, you to have a somewhat deep bench of champions who fit into her bonds to help multiply her damage. Um, whereas Zorbu just does stupid amounts of damage. Critter Wolf, how would you explain the difference between support and DPS? Um, the, a DPS class specifically just does, does damage like black Viper. If it, this is the only thing that throws me off here is that there's this damage of all champions thing. I don't understand why this exists, but black Viper exists to do damage. Like her kit is about doing damage. It's all about her doing damage. It doesn't offer anything to anybody else. That is what a DPS is. A support is all about buffs. Right, Sasaspia, or some kind of support feature. Uh, Sasaspia, you know, spreads spores and makes enemies take more damage. She buffs her teammates uh, within two slots of her, um, and she heals uh, within two slots of her. Technically, we should have her here, like that, right? Um, yeah. So su supports are it's in the name. Supports are there to support your party. The DPS is there to do damage. Uh, tanks are there to take damage and to protect the rest of your party. Um, yeah. So you, you, you can have more than one DPS in a formation as long as that DPS is tagged like Ariza is as a DPS support. Because if then if she's in there in that formation like we are right now, she is supporting instead of doing the damage, right? Because we have Black Viper doing the damage. If you have more than one pure DPS in a formation, no. No. Like, there may be some variants that restrict you to that, uh, but generally speaking, the idea of building a formation is to focus all of the damage, like all of the buffs, onto one DPS, onto your primary DPS. That should be one, there should be one champion regardless of what their role says, that you are focusing all of the buffs from the, from the team on to, to, to skyrocket their damage potential. Uh, what's the best way to do the no support champions patron variants? I'd say we're on the same thing. Malahet, uh, click damage. Uh, because if, if, if it's no support, it means that you can't have anyone with a support role, which means you can only have people with that are pure DPS or Archon, who's a DPS tank. But none of them give buffs to other people, so they're never going to scale over their, their gold, and the click damage is basically going to do as much as they are. So you can throw a couple in just to have them in there uh, to get through any barricades or barriers, but then you're just doing click damage. So you just go until your, your instant click kill is done, and then you reset and do again. Like You set up your Modron that way. Get a taxi. So this might be a weird question, but is it possible to sign up to the newsletter with multiple email addresses so you get multiple free weekend chests? So I get multiple emails a week because I have multiple accounts, but you can only use uh, a weekend newsletter code once. Like th there are different codes for in the different emails that I get, but the, the game knows. So if I punch one weekend chest code in to this account, it's going to give it to me. If I try to punch another one in, it will say I've already used that code even though it's a different code is because it knows that this is the weekend code. It's not going to get, it's not going to do that. It doesn't work that way. You can have multiple accounts, go to multiple email addresses and get multiple newsletter emails for those accounts, but you have to apply them then to all the different accounts. So there's no, there's no point in trying to farm that kind of stuff. Uh, is there any way to make the game not auto minimize when you click off the game? Sure. Uh, you, you don't, you don't run it full screen. So I run mine, uh, 1600 by 900, which is not full screen, right? Um, so it's just a little window on my monitor, uh, and I can click off of it and it doesn't go away. Uh, any suggestion for a good way to get emeralds? Hmm. We just call them gems. Uh, it needs to be more familiars. Uh, Ord 882, just play in the game. Um, you know, the reward for doing an adventure for the first time is gems as part of the award, and the rewards for doing variants are gems. So at initially, just playing through the campaigns is going to give you a large amount of gems. You're also looting those gems uh, out of off of bosses, 
Uh, so as long as you're making progress playing the game and not just sitting somewhere not not making progress, uh, you're going to earn gems. Um, after you have done you know, all of the basic adventures, like all of the storyline adventures for each campaign, and after you've done all of the variants you're, you're capable of doing, if you find yourself now you just want gems, then you start gem farming. Uh, and that's specifically usually related to Mad Wizard and your Modron and Speed Champions. Uh, there's lots of information about that out there, but yeah. Sharpfighter 9000 is a single location uh, where we can listen to all of these songs in their final versions rather than the individual episodes. Um, there are highlights on this on this Twitch channel. So if you, after this is over, if you click on videos and then you click on, you scroll down and you click the second uh, the second section is highlights and you open the highlights, there will be most of the recent ones. Um, and then I don't know if anybody's put this in chat yet or not. Um, the full kind of first two seasons, uh, a season for a CNE game show is, um, 10 episodes usually. Uh, so the first two seasons uh, are, and, and all of the lyrics and everything are in this document. Come on. Um, and along with that, uh, they have the link to each of the highlights. Uh, so you can go back, uh, and watch all of them. Uh, but all the recent ones are in the, are in the highlights just straight off the channel. Um... Seem to be unable to breach past E5 favor. Am I doing something wrong with my baby party? Probably, but that happens because it's a baby party, right? Santa Craft. Um, it's going to be a combination of a couple things. It's going to be your formation. Maybe you're not uh, optimizing your formation yet. Uh, if you're newer, that, that happens. Uh, I've got a guide to formations, uh, both a video guide and a, um, and a written guide. Uh, video ones on the CNE Games YouTube channel and the written ones on the subreddit. Um, you can also get, uh, formation help in the discord. Um, and I also like, I have a starter formation recommendation in my guide to fleet spike that's on the rest subreddit. Um, if it's beyond that, it could be that your, there's a whole thing that I don't know if I've ever really made a guide for, because I don't feel like you can make a guide just for it. It's like a conversation that happens outside of that, but maybe I do have to make a guide just for that. I don't know. Um, efficient upgrades. So a big part of the game when you're just starting off is learning how to upgrade efficiently. Uh, and the game starts you off, if we look right down here, with uh, with this usually the upgrade uh, number at X1. Um, because in the tutorial, that, you know, going up one point at a time is a big deal. But later on, uh -uh, it's the worst thing you can imagine because just putting, spending the gold, like one point of gold only matters if that champion is the one killing things. Um, and as you start getting into where you are into E5 level, that's not the case. What matters then is the upgrade. Like getting to the next upgrade like this, increase the damage of sentry by 300%. Like we don't want to put a point into, like it takes 65 levels to get sentry to this upgrade because the upgrade is at 1350 and she's currently at 1285. Well, I don't want to have to click that X1 button 65 times just to, just to then get her 300% damage when sentry isn't my DPS, right? She's a tank. Putting damage on her doesn't matter. That doesn't help me. So I would, if I had spent, you know, all of that gold to get Sentry an upgrade just because she was the cheapest upgrade, that doesn't actually help my party. So in the scenario we're looking at with these three, well, they're maxed out, but with, with Black Viper as my DPS, this is where I would want to primarily look to put my damage. But I would want to look for any support options that give like this increase the damage of all champions because human wouldn't be my dps he would be a support getting him to this upgrade getting them to this upgrade would boost the damage for black viper uh yeah that's an all champs damage who's got one let me look at one that's not all champs uh, so also doing something like this increase the effect of shandy's agile allies if that was something that was helping me a lot 
this would be where I would want to go. So you have to look at, you have to look at your spending in efficient ways. Um, looking at the next upgrade like this is one way you really just want to go from upgrade to upgrade and not just do the plus ones in between. Um, but you also want to look at, uh, in here, you click on show upcoming down here on the left and it's going to tell you what's coming next. So we know Human's next upgrade is an increase the damage of all champions, uh, 200%. So we're just going to give, give them that. Uh, but now we need to look at, well, what's the next time we're going to want to actually upgrade them to help the party getting them damage doesn't help the party. So the next, uh, the next potential party wide update help update would be at 2,400, right? That's 120 levels past this, this, you know, the one that we're currently at. So giving them X ones or even X fives or X 25s, even an X hundred doesn't matter if it doesn't get me to 2,400. So you get to a point where you're going to start to want what I call banking gold, which if I switch this over to X 100, um, as you can see in the parentheses, it will tell you these all say X 100s because I have more than enough gold to get, give all of these champions a hundred levels. But if I know that the next, I know like here, I need to get to 1080. If that only said 10 in the banked levels, I need to wait until it gets me what? 45 more levels. When it says 45, then I would spend it because then I'm actually efficiently spending that gold until that point. I'm not, if I, if I'm just putting a point here and there, it's not doing anything for me, right? The only place it would be doing anything for me if I were spending it that way would be the primary DPS. So it could be that you're in a point where you're not spending efficiently and you need to start looking at it that way. Um, but it could just be your formation. It could just be the formation that you're building. Uh, it's hard to say. Uh, oh man, we only have like 11 minutes left and I am way behind on questions. So let's try to do these quicker. Uh, did you go over there? Rise of Vlanya connection. I mean, they're both members of Sirens of the Realms. Uh, Vlanya is the actual band manager, uh, and Arisa gets some goodies if, if Vlanya is in the party, but if you're a new player, you're not going to have Vlanya. Don't worry about it. Just use Arisa on their own. Uh, Peacemaker. So Zorba is supposed to be a good DPS. I kind of went away from, Hey, we'll do the fleet's weight questions first. Didn't I? That's okay. Zoraya is supposed, Zorba is supposed to be a good DPS. Would you take an extra effort to go charge him somewhere? Um, yeah, if you if you pick up Zorbu, you have to go farm him. You have to go farm him, and you need to get uh, kills. Aim for like if you if you want to just do farming once and be done with it, aim for EO five kills on each of the four things. Uh, you only need to do beasts, undead, and drow because drow counts as humanoid. So. You know, find places to farm uh, beast, undead, and and drow, and up to EO five, and then and you can do the vast majority of the content in the game with it. There, you don't have to go higher. How does talent spot weakness with fifty stacks work? Uh, one stack is added per kill, but the area only has twenty five kills and reset in a new area. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to look. Hold on, I guess. No, oh, oh, that doesn't. I was going to look at my guide, but let's just pull Talon in. Do, do, do. Talon's newer, so I don't have all of their stuff uh, memorized. Spot weakness. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. Uh, the damage of all champions. Uh, abilities increased by 10% for each enemy killed. Capping at 25 kills. What am I missing? Are we talking about an achievement? Oh, I don't remember what event they came in. It's a spec. Is it a spec buff? I don't remember. Hold on. Let's respec and I'll look at the buffs again. Ah, this increases the stat cap. Okay, so that's how you would... If you were, if you're, if that's what, if you're talking about spot weakness with Pathfinder, then we're increasing the cap. See, now it caps at 50 kills. Is that what you're talking about? So you would need to do Pathfinder to get it up to 50. So yeah, read the specs, I guess. I had to go read the specs, so there you go. 
Uh, can you display the biggest benefit of crawl and if he has the best location in the formation? Uh, crawl can crawl doesn't care about his location as long as it's not. Well, I guess it kind of not not the same way. He doesn't. He's not a tank, so he doesn't want to be in the front, uh, and he doesn't want. Hold on, Buster Cherry. I'll come back in a sec. In a second, uh, he's not a tank, so he doesn't want to be in the front, and he doesn't want to be adjacent to anyone that slows down his attack speed. I'm um, looking at you, Point, uh, because he wants to hit things as many things as possible to spread his plagues. Uh, the biggest benefit, there's there's two. Uh, as a newer player, the biggest benefit is his, is his pilfer uh, plague, which is going to get you lots of gold. Uh, but he also has uh, a pain debuff, uh, which is going to let you do a lot more damage. Uh, Buster, you're wrong. I guess that's the clearest way to say this. They reset it a new area. Yes, they do. Uh, you can have max of 25 kills in one area. No. That's not true. I can, I can, I can kill 25 here. I can turn auto progress off and guess what? Enemies keep coming and now I can build uh, talent up and keep killing. So turn your auto progress off and sit on one level and just kill and you'll get to 50 stacks. It's only if you're progressing uh, that you're going to, you're going to run out of stuff. Uh, when's the best way to start using favor? I don't know what that question means, Darius the Mayor. Can you re-ask that so I know what you're trying to say? Or what you're trying to ask? I don't understand what you mean by you're using favor. Use favor just inherently by resetting and playing the next mission. So is there something else you're going for there? Sharkfighter9000, I'm finally to the point where I'm using time gates to get epics rather than new champions. Nice. Currently rotating Briv, Zorbu, and Human. Is there a better trio in terms of benefiting from item levels and rarity? Well, you're. I mean, so the way you're going to want to just rotate through is rotate through champs just to get their epics. Once they've got their epics, rotate out. Briv, Zorbu, and Human are a good combination because they all scale well off their items. So then you're just going to, after you're done with one of them, put somebody else who also scales well with their items. Where's the best place to farm undead enemies? There are certain variants. Um, if you want if you want more information on Zorbu, hit, uh, hit up my guide to Zorbu. There, I actually put in uh, specific named adventures and or variants and levels uh, that are great for farming. Uh, Tarks is a rise of buff by any of Ashara's specializations. This is Ashara off the top of my head. This is, these are things I don't memorize because does she get uh, an Asimar? I mean, you got to read these. I don't see an Asimar here. Huh, yeah, exotic races, Asimar. Right there. When using blacksmithing contrast, do all six item slots have an equal chance to be selected? Uh, they should, slick shot. They should. Uh, love it, Lev Levus. How do you see how many red? gems black viper has uh you have to open you have to open her up and go to like either either right here in upgrades i don't think it shows under formation buffs does it no yeah so under upgrades uh and jewel thief once you you put her in the formation uh there's a total gems collected right here all adventures fifteen thousand seven eighty three is where mine is not super high uh, question about Sassby. Is there any good combination of buffs characters to raise your tank's max HP to really abuse her healing? I mean, the only way to raise your tank's max HP is to put more tanks in or to open or to, or to get potions. Um, that doesn't abuse her healing though. Because her healing is based off the number of spores you have, not on a tank's health. So like right now I'm healing a max of 488.7 per second for each spore in reserve. So there isn't a way to abuse healing like that with Sasaspia. Um, I just have a white piece missing of equipment for Brunor out of a silver chest that should have filled a gap with the collection, but it hasn't. Well, yeah, because there's no there's no rule Griegel that says that it's going to fill an empty hole in your collection. Like chests don't have that rule. They They have rules about like when you first open a silver chest and you don't have any gear, it will try to give you a piece of gear for each slot. 
But once you have uh, like higher rarity gear, like you have a hole, like say you have Brunor's green, blue, and purple for that item, but you don't have the white, well, you just have to keep opening silver chests until you get it. Uh, Serie, which free play adventures in each campaign are the best in terms of pushing for No idea. I don't, I don't bother messing around with that. Um, somebody out there is probably, yeah, you, I mean, there's, there's resources out there that are going to have information on, on which ones have, uh, no armored bosses or things like that, but I don't, I don't memorize things like that because I play each adventure when I'm playing through a campaign for the first time, I play each story based adventure as if it's a, a favor run on a newer account. So I'm doing every adventure and pushing for favor in each one. So uh, until I get into harder campaigns like uh, Descent into Avernus, um, I I get more than enough favor to max out all the blessings like from the other campaigns by the time I get to the end of the story. Like you don't have to ever stop and do a, a free play if you do it that way. Uh, so I don't memorize like the best uh, favor farming locations. Uh, CO, what is the best strategy for tight-fisted foes this is one of the variants I didn't memorize all the names oh here we go black viper starts in the formation only enemies killed by black viper drop gold i mean the best strategy is to not do it until you've got all of them showing as green so you have lots of favor like get as much favor as possible before doing it because only black viper is going to give you any gold to move forward uh, it also you might also want to use gold fine potions. Uh, is there a way to farm fresh fist faster? No. Where is that black viper outfit coming from? Uh, there is a uh, this weekend. I already bought it, so I can't show it to you. But this weekend, the the thing in the shop right here, uh, like the gold sunken chest boost, like there's it gives you black viper's pirate outfit and it gives you uh, her her feet. Uh, we may go a couple minutes over. I'm just going to finish all of these questions off. Uh, does contract stack with a clairvoyance potion? Uh, you will. You should get some, anything that affects your gold find should affect the po for, should affect the contract when you pop it. But that doesn't mean go popping all of your. You're you're not using uh, bounty contracts necessarily just for the gold, so don't necessarily worry about that. Just push as far as you can. It's more important to be at your wall than to have potions popped. Uh, Cosmic 420 for hero specific chest. Should we do the free play of the events first for the silvers or do the variants in the free? Uh, just make sure all the variants show as green before doing them. Once they show as green, do them. And everything else comes after that. You know, the game is clips from the unfair seas event. Uh, that would be neat for the songs uh, from Bardic Inspiration. It would. It really would. Uh... What does increasing levels beyond the soft cap do? Uh, it gives you a, like a, a minor, like a 1% bonus to damage, which isn't uh, really anything at all by the time you get up there, um, and a slight heal to a champion. Like a quarter or a third of their health, or less. I, I can't remember how much it is. Do you know what Havilar's new plus two charisma feat gives her access to? I don't off the top of my head, but I haven't looked. Um, can you explain Black Viper's ultimate smoke screen? Because it feels like it doesn't really do anything. Yeah, we did that earlier. Uh, it cuts damage from enemies, uh, done in half and it makes all of her attacks sneak attacks, which means they're doing more damage. Um, if it's not, if you don't feel it, it's really doing anything. It's cause you weren't taking a lot of damage and didn't need the damage reduction. Uh, or you had plenty of damage in the first place. So that didn't matter. Or you weren't going to have enough damage with that bonus anyway. Right. When is it worth to spend favor into blessings. That's a clearer question. Okay. Uh, whenever you can, and it doesn't give that pop-up. So when you come over here, uh, you make sure that warnings are enabled uh, and you come over. And if you've got fire favor, you try to spend it on places that make sense, right? Like the first place that makes sense is extra damage. Um, it isn't as important necessarily to reduce your attack speed, but you know, getting more favor makes sense. So extra training, then divine blessing, then speedy attacks. You try to spend it. Uh, if the warning pops up, you stop. You don't spend it. Can you use the Taylor Swift song for the outro? No, uh, we're going to do Black Viper again because it's Fleet's Wake. It's Fleet's Wake. Uh, and unfortunately, we don't have... I would have done a song for each of those, but we don't have a song for Sasaspia or Ariza yet. So, All right, folks, that was it. That was uh, almost 60 questions. And we covered everything about Fleet's Wake. I'm going to go not talk for the rest of the day. 
thank you for joining me. We will be back next week. What is next week's? Hold on. It's not Speed Champions. That's like two weeks away. The next week is Advanced Formation Strategy. Mm, I better study up on my Advanced Formation Strategy. Uh, but we'll talk about, next week we'll talk about things like, how the right, do you use Archon and Artemis? Uh, also, uh, things like uh, maybe, uh, what is debuff swapping? Um, and click, I thought click damage didn't matter after the beginning of levels, right? So we'll talk about that kind of stuff uh, in advanced formation strategy um, so that you can see, you know, the kind of things people do uh, that are funky with formation building and also that push real far, right? We'll try to tackle that next week. And that's it. I'm out. Uh, I'll catch you then. Have a good weekend. Stay safe. Uh, use your... Oh, oh! somebody had mentioned earlier. I gotta, I gotta add this. Um, this is... Uh, someone said they watched this. County Coup, I think. Uh, they watched uh, this DCA live show and they loved it. Uh, here's the DCA live show that has Black Viper in it. It's fantastic. Um, they're all dressed up in their... Uh, in their outfits, full cosplay, and they're doing it like a live stage show, but it is D&D. &D. Like, it's not just sitting at a table and rolling dice. They're, like, moving and walking and interacting. It's like a play, but combined with D&D, &D, it's fantastic. Go watch that this weekend. Um, and on the way out, we're going to do the Black Viper again. Bye, everybody. Black Viper. <laughs>